Hi everyone, this is the uh, introduction lecture for your thesis. Hopefully you're listening to this sometime during your third year, uh, preferably in second term. Uh, if you're on PEY, you might want to listen to this as well because it gives you a, a set of ideas about how to set up your thesis and how to approach the thesis uh, as a fourth year project and a course. Okay, so we're going to cover four main things today. The first one is uh, the issue around choosing a research area. The second is strategies for approaching a professor. The third is around defining your project. And the fourth is around thesis logistics. So in the process, we're going to kind of dispel some myths about thesis and kind of uh, set you straight on a few ideas about thesis. Um, and hopefully we'll get you excited and engaged about um, finding a research project for yourself that you can really sink your teeth into in fourth year. Okay, so let's get started. So what's a thesis? So your thesis is your real first opportunity to conduct, document, and experience um, individual engineering-related thesis uh, research as an undergraduate student. Um, so what does that actually mean? Well, it means that you're taking a research project from the starting point to the end point, right? So you're starting by identifying some sort of gap in science or engineering or a design problem of some sort related to science and engineering. You're developing a plan or a method or a solution to address that gap or problem. Um, this will involve it conducting a major literature review, then executing your independent research project that comes out of that literature review, uh, which will lead to the generation and analysis of data, uh, which you'll of course have to present um, your research methods, designs, results, and claims in an actual finished thesis document, okay? So it's really an opportunity for you to engage in the whole process of scientific research, um, and it should serve you well for any of your future endeavors. So let's get started about talking uh, about uh, choosing a research area. Um, one of the major myths uh, around choosing a research area or a set of topics is that you have to stay within your own option area and can only choose a supervisor within engineering. Now, when you're choosing a research area, you should really think about your skills and knowledge, which would relate to your option area and the area that you would have expertise in, and also um, areas which the university has expertise in. So that might lead to reinforcing that myth. Um, you should, of course, take into account your current interests. You know, what are you actually interested in uh, and your past experience? All of these things might lead you to think that you need to stay in your option area. But a really careful consideration of your research area should take into account what your future goals are as well. And if it's uh, if your future goals are around uh, a different topic area, um, or you know, a variation of your field, that's possible as well. Um, don't, you know, while you should let these things help determine what area you wanna work in, you're allowed to research uh, in almost any area as long as it's relevant to engineering and uh, as long as you can describe it's in the inclusion of engineering science or engineering design within the context of the project, okay? so. You don't have to stay in your option area. You can venture outside of it. Um, say, for example, if you are an ECE student uh, and you're interested in implementing algorithms for financial analysis, okay? That's perfectly reasonable. Um, but what's really important is that they, uh, the project includes some elements of engineering science uh, and engineering design, okay? What does that mean? Well, we'll go then to the definitions of engineering science and um, engineering design that have been provided by accreditation bureaus. So engineering science is something that involves the application of mathematics and natural science to practical problems. Okay. Um, and engineering design involves the integration of mathematics, natural sciences, engineering sciences, and complementary studies in order to develop elements systems and processes to meet specific needs, okay? Um, you can tell by these two definitions that they're actually pretty wide ranging. So it's gonna be relatively easy to set up a project that is in your interest area that 
uh, addresses at least one of these two categories. Okay. So at the moment, your first stop in thinking about thesis uh, should be the thesis page on the engineering science undergraduate Blackboard page. Okay. So if you look at that, that uh, association that you should have on your Blackboard page, um, it's APSC ESC undergraduate. Um, <clears throat> you'll see a thesis section, uh, and there there's going to be a bunch of supervisor requests forms, there's going to be a bunch of forms related to thesis, a, a sample syllabus, uh, and a bunch of resources that you can take a look at. Um, in particular, I think what's going to be useful for you as you're thinking about framing your project and starting your project are a bunch of student interviews that we've uh, filmed with former students. They can give you a lot of words of wisdom about how to approach the thesis, how to approach professors, um, and strategies for success in thesis. So we currently have five of these up um, from various students uh, that have done uh, work in different options. So we have physics, biomed, aerospace, uh, nano option when it was there, um, and, and a few biomed. So, uh, if you're interested in finding out what student, other students' experiences have been like, this is a really good place to start. And I think it'll help you in terms of developing a good idea about how to approach your thesis. Okay. So let's get to some more specific words of wisdom around choosing a research area. Um, these come from student interviews that we've done in the past, uh, but they really capture the sentiment of what we think uh, is a good strategy for choosing your own research area. The first one involves finding out what your passion is, okay? Um, you know, if you can actually engage in a project that you're interested in um, and you're passionate about, it makes it so much easier to do a good job there, okay? Um, and that might seem obvious, uh, but sometimes it can be really difficult to actually figure out what you want to do. Um, and it's something that, that you should really uh, think hard about because it's going to make the job of thesis a lot easier. Okay? I've seen a lot of students who have just been handed a project kind of last minute because they haven't really thought through this. Um, and it's much, much more difficult to complete those in a manner that is um, complete uh, and comprehensive than if you're doing something you know you love. Uh, the other thing is not to rush. Right. So this student says, you know, I might have committed myself to a project before I really explored all of my options. Um, you have a lot of time between now and the summer. Um, start to think about, you know, these topics that you would like to explore uh, and figure out whether you really want to do them as well. Um, and think about whether you can set up the situation that you want to have around this particular topic with the right supervisor, with the right um, fit in terms of a research lab and a project um, before you actually commit to before you actually really commit to a specific project. Finally, think about what you're actually motivated by as well. So not just a subject area that you're passionate about, but what do you want to be able to accomplish? Do you want an outcome? Uh, you know, to be able to contribute to a cleaner environment, a new device? Um, or is it that you want to contribute to a process? Um, or is it the research environment uh, or the type of research that you'll be doing is that you're really interested in? Um, so it's not just the field, but it's the type of work that you'll be doing within that field as well. Now, in your third year, you should be really going and starting to think about this. So approach your professors to discuss ongoing and future projects. Um, there's the possibility that they already have thesis topics already laid out for students to work through. Um, in that case, you won't necessarily have uh, the choice of a brand new topic um, that you want to work on or you've defined, but it's uh, something that you can work on with the professor on. Okay. Finally, thesis is a really good way to find out if you really like doing research. Uh, this is a long-term, almost, you know, either four-month or eight-month project. Uh, it's going to give you a sense of whether or not you're suited for graduate school or future research projects. 
Um, and it's a good way to start prepping for graduate school as well and thinking about graduate school as well. So use it um, in order to do that also. Now, some of you might say, okay, well, I'm not, I'm already not planning to go to graduate school. So this experience isn't relevant for you. Um, but the reality is thesis is not just for people going into graduate school. It's an opportunity to gain technical expertise and make connections in the field. There are going to be a lot of projects that could be client centered or um, have industrial connections, depending on the prof that you choose. And so it's possible to move your career forward in that way as well. So in choosing a uh, research area, consider all of these settings, right? Theoretical settings, laboratory settings, clinical settings, uh, and design settings, right? You have all of that, those areas to choose from. We've also had students do a lot of policy or education related thesis projects, and those are also possible. But again, they're going to have to focus on engineering and science contexts and take an engineering approach. Um, one thing that does you know, bode well for you is that U of T is a really large place with a lot of faculty members to choose from um, with a wide range of expertise. Now, the only requirement is that you have to be supervised by a faculty member at the University of Toronto, um, either in the research stream uh, or in the teaching stream. Um, if you are looking at someone who is an adjunct or sessional faculty member, uh, please contact us to, convert, uh, to confirm whether or not that supervisor is eligible to supervise your research for you. Okay. Now, there's a huge variety of potential areas, right? So I'll give you a quick list of all of these uh, titles from previous projects, and you can see the huge range of things from biomedical research that's in a clinical setting, um, to design settings, to financial analysis settings involving algorithms, uh, to aerospace uh, design and, and structural analysis. Um, and so you can start to see that there's a huge range of things. Um, where you can look for a little bit more information about what previous students have done to get a good idea of what the possibilities are, again, for your work, uh, is the thesis database, okay? Um, the thesis library, and you can start to look on departmental websites for supervisors as well. So the thesis database is uh, something that will house uh, where professors have uploaded research profiles for you to review. So you can look at what these profs have been doing in their research in the past. Uh, and it might be a good place to start to uh, identify potential contacts that you might want to talk to. Okay. Um, and it's available at that URL. The thesis library uh, is a physical library. Uh, it's just um, a few cupboards in BA 21, uh, 2110. Um, and it houses all of the old thesis projects uh, that NGI students have done. Now, you can look through the uh, catalog listing and sign up uh, up to three at a time for two weeks at a time to kind of look at what uh, people have done in the past. The list of projects are available on the NGSI undergraduate port portal page and are organized by supervisor. One really good idea is if you're thinking about a particular supervisor um, who has supervised students at engineering science in the past to go take a look at some of the work that their students have done under their supervision. It's going to give you a sense of what the expectations are and how um, and how to kind of address or set up your project with that supervisor as well. Uh, and finally, the departmental websites are a really good place to start to narrow down um, if you're starting for a field of interest. So for example, if you know that you're really interested in water studies, you know, you would start to look with civil or uh, mineral engineering. Um, you can start to see that they have a list of research groups around uh, various topics. And if you're interested, um, you can start to look through them. So for example, building science, and there's a bunch of questions that they, they address there. Um, you might look at environmental engineering as a field that you're interested in. 
uh, and you'd be able to find that they have a specific research group around the quality of drinking water right with faculty that are associated with that particular discipline so it's an area where you can really uh, make use of um, the departmental website to kind of narrow down an area uh, or a set of people to start to get into contact with okay and research projects can just happen um, they can just come out of other projects or other connections. So for example, the student um, describes how his thesis project actually just was a carry forward of a physical control systems course project um, in which they were paired with graduate students, right? It's something that can happen um, coming out of your courses. So think about the projects around your courses as well, okay? Um, you know, it can be a combination of things as well. Um, you know, you might have a certain expertise in a field um, or a type of technique that you want to apply to a field that you maybe don't have experience in um, or, or don't have, you know, formal training in, but it's something that you can get along the way if you have one of the things that will set you up for that project, right? So again, don't be afraid to go outside what you already know. 